Okay, um, so thank you very much for the introduction, Liam, and for having me today. So, yeah, as, as Liam highlighted, I'm going to talk today about Wasm Worker Server or how to write portable serverless applications thanks to WebAssembly. This was supposed to be a joint talk with my teammate Rafael. He couldn't make it on the last minute change last week, but I mean, he's made, doing an amazing job also on the, on the project. I wanted to, to put it here too. So the first thing to, um, I usually get the question is, what's Wasm Worker Server? So Wasm Worker Server is a tool to develop and run serverless applications. That's what it's important for, for developers and for the people that are going to use it. Internally, it uses WebAssembly, enabling you to combine multiple languages and run your applications almost anywhere. But the, inter the interesting part on every project is to understand why we built it or why we decided one year ago to start creating this project instead of using another one, for example. So starting a new project is an exciting but a rough uh, task. You need to decide what the language that you want to use. And if you're in a team, you need to coordinate what are the languages that we understand, how we want to start this project, architecture, patterns, frameworks, all of the stuff. What are the tooling that we plan to use for this specific project? The developing environment, everyone has preferences on this, so it, sometimes it gets complex to get all the different developers working on the same project using the right tools to collaborate and contribute together. How do you plan to distribute the application? That's also something important that affects the way you develop uh, the project. Also, how do you plan to deploy it? All those things happen at the beginning of the project, and um, some of the responses to this question get written into stone when you start the project, and you need to carry them over during all the time of the project life cycle. So based on this, we started to um, talk together and discuss, is there is something we can do for this? I'm trying to make projects more flexible in the sense that we can start with a language, we can implement some part of the application using a different language, for example, that may be better for that specific case. Can we provide a simple way to run different languages together without having to install Node.js, Ruby interpreter, Python, all the different tools together in your laptop? Containers solved a lot in the past, but could move it like one step further and simplify this even more? So to solve all these questions, we started creating Wasm Worker Server. And we decided to do it based on four principles. The first one is that it should be an easy to use CLI. So developers should focus on the code while using the languages they already know. This is a, criti a critical part for us because we don't want developers to have to learn a new language to use our tool. We want to use to, for them to reuse the knowledge they already have and start continue writing the applications that they, that they want. We want it to be compatible. All of us felt like at some point when you created a project, we started maybe doing some specific implementation that is tied to a specific platform or a specific service. And it gets complicated to move away from it. So you need to spend a lot of time working to, to change it um, and adapt. This is why we wanted to make it compatible. So the code you run today, it will run in a different place if you need for some reason to change the way that you deploy the code, for example. It should be portable in the sense that the applications as today, they run in many, many different environments. Actually, in the previous presentation, um, the, the Cosmonic team showed like there are many different pieces in which you can run the applications. That goes from cloud to your laptop and even devices like your phone, for example. And we want to keep this. So the code that you write can run in all the different environments and adapt to, to, the, uh, to provide the best experience that, that you can provide to your, to your users. And then it should be secure. By default, the code that you write only have access to the resources it needs. And when we did, were discussing about all these features, we noticed that WebAssembly is a really good fit because it matches all the different uh, principles that we wanted and decided to start working on this project. So, how it looks, actually. For Wasm Worker Server, a project is a set of files, as you would do for any, for any other project. 
In this example, we have four different files in an imaginary folder like hello.js, id, brackets, the wasm, the toml file, and the gtignore. When you run wasm worker server, the CLI, it detects the files that it considers as independent functions that can reply to requests, or how we call them, workers. It also um, identifies the related configuration files for those workers. So you can enable specific features and provide access to specific resources only for the workers that need it. So you avoid, if one worker needs to talk, for example, to an external service using HTTP calls, you avoid the other one calling a service if it's not meant to, to do it. And once it detects the different files, it exposes them as an HTTP API. In the case of the hello.cs file, it will detect it as hello. And in the case of the bracket notation, it will use a parameterized root. So it means that any root slash whatever will be managed by the ID wasm except the slash hello root, which has a higher priority than, than the parameterized roots. And that's all you need to know to start working with wasm worker server. And I'm going to show you one for example about how you can run your first worker in just one minute. So here, the first thing that you need to do is you need to install Wasm Worker Server, which is this single um, command. It's already installed in my laptop, so I'm just going to run the help command. And now I have one folder, which is my project, that contains an index.js file. This index.js file exports a function which um, sports sorry, an object that contains a fence function that returns a response with some specific body and appends some headers. If you are familiar with uh, the front end environment and platform like Cloudflare, Vercel, and this uh, Netlify, you may be familiar with this specific source code. And this is part of the promise that we wanted to, to create with, with Watson Worker Server. And it's that this same exact file run on all those platforms without having to change a single line of code. So we want that, that you can take your code and run it where it makes sense for, for you. So in this specific uh, example, I have two, um, two files in that folder, same as, as the example I was showing before, the ID, which is a parameterized root, and then the index. So now we run WWS, pass the folder, and if we um, do a GET request, then we get the information from the, from the worker. We get the body here, and we also get the header that we configure in the, in the worker. We can also query the uh, parameterized root, and then we have here a similar one, but in this case, it's taking the, param the parameter from the root and showing that information in the body. Another thing that we are also exploring is that for Wasm Worker Server, the only thing that you need is a specific folder. But folder could be, for example, a remote repository. So you don't need to actually download, clone manually, but you can point to certain artifacts that are remote, and then you can pull them locally and automatically uh, spin that, that specific uh, project. In this case, we are supporting a, G a remote G repository, but in the future, the idea is that we will support more and more targets, so you just need to run the command, the specific location, and it will run the project for you. In this case, we are running it from uh, our own repository in which we have an example folder that contains many different examples, and in this case, we are uh, using the JS basic. So now, if I curl to the same URL, I get the response from that example. And the good thing is that in our repository, we have in this folder in the example one, four examples in six different languages that you can try to start working with Wasm Worker Server. So you have a good base to start creating your projects with, uh, with, uh, with Wasm Worker Server. So how it works internally? Now that you've got a taste about what you can do with it, let's see how, how the data passes between the different boundaries and why we decided to do it in that way. So we have on one side Wasm Worker Server, which is the CLI and the server that is listening for requests. And then we have my worker Wasm, which is a specific worker that could be written in RAS or Go that will reply to the URL. The first thing that happens is that Wasm Worker Server receives an HTTP request. 
It identifies the target worker based on the different list of file. It detects what's the one that should reply to that root. Prepare the WAS environment. That's, that is done also by uh, the configuration. So it enables the feature that you granted uh, for that specific worker. And then serialize the request and pass the data via the STDM. The worker does the job, provide a response, and then send the data in a serialized way back to the to Watson Worker Server using STD out, and then Watson Worker Server return the response. So that's the kind of very, very basic flow of data inside the project. If we add uh, an interpreted language uh, as I was using before with JavaScript, there is one intermediate step because we need an actual interpreter to run this code for you. So there is this element in the middle that takes the information from Watson Worker Server, convert it, run the, the user code like the JavaScript script, and then return the response back. This approach, as you may imagine, has benefits, but it also has challenges. So the first thing is that using this approach with, uh, with data management on STD in and STD out help us to add new languages and version of the languages quite rapidly. So we didn't have to wait to implement very custom features because any interpreter that can be compiled into WebAssembly comes with basic features like STDing, serialization, and all that stuff. So it means that in one week, I think we created three SDKs for three different languages without having to deal and to spend a lot of time on this. So we can grow later on. Interpreted languages are transparent for users. They don't need to compile any single line of code. They didn't have to call any other uh, tool for compiling, for example, the JavaScript code. It just drops the, the file, and then it runs and um, responds directly. And also that workers have independent permissions. You can configure every worker with its own sets of resources or, uh, that can access, and the other won't be able to do that. But there are also challenges. The first one is performance, of course. Because all these data boundaries with serialization, all that stuff, increase the, the, the response time, which is something that shouldn't be there. But it's something that we are working on and trying to find ways in which we can keep this promise about being easy to use while not uh, affecting to the performance of the, of the server. It's also a challenge with, uh, about being compatible with other platforms. Because for third time, uh, for data passing the request and response information, it's simple to make it compatible with others. But for other features that we will see later, we still have to create this glue code or this way in which we pass those, uh, those features that are different from other platforms. So it's not, it's not simple to, to make it. The other part is that the more language we support, the more features we need to implement in all the languages. So at the beginning, all the languages supported all the versions, but once we are adding more and more complex uh, features, like we will see later AI inference, for example, it's not trivial to add all those, um, all those features to the, to the workers. However, with all the work happening in the component model that we I think since one month ago, we support components in Watson Worker Server. We'll simplify how we can add those bindings to, to, this, um, to support all the features. And also the bugging, but I think this is something common to WebAssembly. It's not something specific to, to Watson Worker Server. And just an example about how simple it was to add a, a language uh, to Watson Worker Server. One teammate created a brain whatever um, SDK for, for Wasm Worker Server. Here you have an example, which is a super weird language, the first time I saw that. And if you run this after compiling it to Wasm to a module, it returns hello Wasm, which for me is pretty amazing. And it represents how simple it is to add new languages SDKs for, for Wasm Worker Server. So let's talk about the features. What are the features embedded in this specific uh, tool? We have an in-memory key value store which anyone can use, it's really simple and it's available in all the languages. We have external HTTP requests, so you can call third-party services by allowing the domains, um, um, configuring what can be reached from inside the worker. You have also dynamic routing, as we saw. We, we not only have parameterized route, but we also got in an external contribution the, what we call catch-all uh, catch routes, which means that 
you are not only taking one portion of the, of the uh, full path, but just all the subpaths from that one. This is a pretty uh, cool use case that I will talk uh, later. We also have AI inference with WASNN. Thank you, Andrew. I don't know if he's here. Yeah. Thank you for all the leadership um, and the work here. We're just taking leverage of all this tech amazing technology. We also have static asset management, which is something pretty common for some specific uh, use cases. And much more. And you can check all these features in the, in the official documentation. But let me show you some examples about how this works. So here I have a different project, which is uh, this demo two, but in reality what it's inside is a tic-tac-toe game that uses the in-memory key value store to provide the functionality. So here I just want to show you that for, uh, by default, workers doesn't have access to any key value store and you need to configure it manually. You need to give it a namespace and then you can start using it directly. So if I now run the demo, let me open here, okay. So I have the first one. Now I need to open it in a different tab. I will try to do it in the same. Okay, huh? okay, yeah, that could be a good feature <laughs> for the example. So here, as you can see, you can start playing tic-tac-toe. It works pretty well. We have also the other example, um, which is the AI inference with, uh, with Watson Worker Server. For this specific one, I first need to initialize the open binary, which is the runtime behind this, uh, this example. So I just configure it in my environment so Watson Worker Server can find it. And now, if we check the inference toml file, which is the one configuring the, the worker, we see here that we have more features that we can configure in Watson Worker Server. On one side, we can configure the models that we were to preload. This is a pretty new uh, feature in the WASNN specification in which we are passing the already existing models that you can call from inside the, the, the worker. And then we are also molding certain folders inside. So the worker can store the images for later usage and it can provide some specific data that is required for the worker um, to, to provide the labels for the images. So if I run this example, now I can open this one. It's an image classification example that I forgot to mention. So if I put here an ambulance, it works. So it's really easy to start working with all these features together and just put everything and start using the ones that make sense for, for your application. And these are all the supported languages that we have as today. We support Ruby, JavaScript, uh, Python, the, in the interpreted side, and we also support Rust, Go, and Seek. And the cool thing about this is that these two languages, Go and Seek, were external contributions. So it means that some people decide that they want to have these languages inside Watson Worker Server and pursue to create the SDKs. So it's, it's a good sign that people want to use specific languages as they, as they create their projects. And one of the things that I usually highlight with Watson Worker Server is that it allows you to create polyglot applications and especially to integrate multiple existing applications into one project. So in this example, we have kind of a full JavaScript UI project that renders some pages outside and we mount everything in the root. So it means that by default, any root, any root will be captured by this worker and will provide similar to a single page application in the, in the terms of front end. We want, for example, add a new API to this project and we want to use Python. So it's simple. Just run, just put this specific file inside the API using the same approach, and now everything under slash API will be uh, managed by the Python application. You can use Flask or any framework that you want. But now, if you won't even want to go a step further, um, you say, okay, it's fine that I'm using Python, but I want to start migrating some of the uh, endpoints to Go. That's simple in Boston Worker Server. You can take, create a resource, which is a fixed one, and then, 
that specific URL will be replied by a completely different language, and everything works together. And you have a path for migrating stuff. It's not like you have to start from scratch an entire project. You can take a 16 project, put together, and start migrating step by step, if it makes sense for you. And what about deployments? This is a hot topic. Um, since I mentioned before, run, run almost anywhere, how can we reply to that specific uh, bet for, for the project? So in reality, Wasm Worker Server is a very thin layer on top of an existing Wasm runtime. In this case, Wasm time. So for us, the best way to approach the deployment of Wasm Worker Server today is not having opinions about it. We are still in learning mode. We want to understand where users, customers want to put the projects, how, you want, how they want to deploy it before taking any decision. So you can deploy Wasm Worker Server as any other kind of service that you deploy in your infrastructure today. You can put it in virtual machines, that's totally fine, cloud server, it's a container directly, putting the binary inside. You can run through container D in Docker and Kubernetes, thanks to the Kunkwasi project. Actually, we have a talk tomorrow about, about how to run um, applications with Wasm Worker Server and Kubernetes. You can even put them in small devices if you want, like Raspberry Pi. And we're exploring crazy ideas, like why not to run Wasm Worker Server in the browser, for example. But that's something that may come later. So what about the future for the project? What do we plan to do uh, next? So the first thing is that we want to add more languages and improve the existing support for them. Because this is something that keep in all the conversations that we have about WebAssembly. People want to use the language they, they know. We also want to add more features. For example, we want to add persistent. For now, we have in memory key value store, but we want to make it persistent. We want to think about SQL databases, those kind of things that keep coming in different conversations. We want to improve the platform compatibility. And at this point, one of the things that we are exploring and it looks promising is the component model and the WASI Cloud Core, um, which is a set of standards for accessing common resources like key value stores, SQL, HTTP handlers. So if we can provide this as an alternative and that work with the, with the other workers in, in Wasm Worker Server, those will be automatically deployable in other platforms that are compatible with these interfaces. And we also want to think a standard deployment. It's cool that we have a thin runtime, but can we make something on top of that that makes sense for the entire project and provides you a better, um, a better experience when deploying, like pushing a project, putting multiple projects under the same host, and managing it for you in a better way so you don't need to manage it as independent processes in your infrastructure. And if you have any other crazy ideas, we are pretty open about discussing it. So if you want, uh, feel free to go to the repository under the discussion section in GitHub, and feel free to drop any ideas that you want for, for discussion with the team. Um, that's the feature, but what you can do today is to try it. So here you have the, the QR code that goes to the documentation site, and you will get access to all the examples that like the tic-tac-toe and the ones that I played today. You can use them, you can try, um, combine all the different languages. Um, of course, open any issue that you find with the project, um, continue dropping ideas for, for the team. Um, yeah, that's all that I have for today. Another phenomenal presentation, thank you. Questions? Thank you. Okay, no questions, so I will be around, so in any case, feel free to, to ping me here. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>